Tuesday show, Pugs and Kelly broadcasting live today from Texas Motor Speedway. Oh, it's race weekend. I don't even have to ask where you're going to be this weekend. I know where everybody's going to be. This is the place. I thought you were asking Brendan. No, it's just asking. <laughs> yeah, just, like, I think he'll be here. I'll Kelly? be here today. I'm out of here tonight, though. Kelly, tell us who we have. <laughs> Who's our guest? Well, it's Bren, Brendan Gong. <laughs> I have, for some reason, Brendan and Brandon. Uh, come I answered, out very I similarly. Both and much worse. I know how to spell it. It's just pronoun <laughs> pronouncing it. I appreciate you guys having. Me. Of course, we know Brendan from the uh, number seventy-seven South Point Racing Truck. We'll look for that tonight, right? That'll be us. We're we're a pretty good truck this weekend, so I'm pretty happy. Did no. you have any nicknames when you were a kid? I've had a lot of nicknames. Fatty. <laughs> Get out of here! You were not. <laughs> You Still am. What are you talking about? You should have seen the chicken fried steak thing I just had today. Holy Is cow. Is there a sermon back there? No, we were out at, in Roanoke, Texas, right across the street, right across the highway from the track. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, uh, an old Napa associate of mine is the mayor of Roanoke. And so we always go and give tax dollars to him. And we go to this, what's the name of that? Uh, the Prairie House or Prairie something House. like that. It's it's just this little bitty old looking gas station. Yeah. They served me a chicken fried ribeye. Oh that literally gosh. was that big, and my team laughed at me. I'm like, yeah, this is not good on race day. It was delicious, wasn't it? Oh, it was fantastic. Those are always the places. See, I tell you, a little gas station roadside. It, it looks like it was an old gas station. They converted, added, added the back to it. Added. AJ Foyt goes there. All everybody knows about this place from around this area. And holy cow! I feel. I mean, I don't know if I'm going to fit my race suit today. I'm going to have to move the wheel up. Those Did you have that when you were the walk-on basketball star of Georgetown? Yeah, I don't know if uh, I, I could have had it then because I expended a lot more calories than I do now. Um, I probably could afford it then. At 32, uh, I probably should have pushed the chicken fried steak away from you a little bit sooner. No, now's the uh -oh. when. Now's when you pull it towards you. You're 32. You're 20. You know as well as I do. Your 20s are the most treacherous time period in your life. If you're gonna die in some crazy way, it's gonna occur in your 20s. You've made it. Enjoy the chicken fried steak. Wow, folks. that's how big it was. We have a, we, the folks at home can't see it. We have a picture on a on a phone camera of how big the chicken fried steak was that we ate today. Huge. That along looks with, darn good. Along with the mash and gravy and the mac and cheese. I mean, it's not like I had a low carb meal this morning. I'm, the Atkins <laughs> diet definitely ain't for me. Yeah, that's all that stuff. Uh, she mentioned the Georgetown stuff. Yep. Now, uh, racing, stuff. racing and basketball. Oh, that phone. That, that don't really go hand in hand. I played football and basketball at Georgetown. Um, I played two sports while I was there. Basically, I was, I was racing before I got there. I grew up in a great family. My, my mother and father you know, were fantastic where we had to leave it to be everything. Yeah. Two big brothers, every night dad was home at dinner at 6.30, mm -hmm. you know, stab you in the arm if you held your fork wrong. <laughs> and uh, I never saw that episode of Beaver. Yeah, it, it was the leave it to be for Vegas stuff. And, uh, you know, I had a great family growing up, and anything you wanted, if you wanted to play sports, my dad always wanted you to do whatever you wanted to do. Didn't believe in the phenom, didn't believe in only doing this, and, you right. know, nowadays so many kids, their parents just have them do just piano, and you're going to be a piano player. Just, I'm going to get you to race go-karts at four years old, and, no, nah, I mean, when it was time to play football, I played football. I played volleyball, I played softball. We bowled. You know, anything you could do and you wanted to do, my parents would let you do it. And so I played everything under the sun you could think of all the way through high school. was a pretty good football player, was a decent basketball player. I raced cars. My dad grew up, I grew up watching my dad race in the desert. You're the Baja 1000. Sure. So my daddy did the Baja 1000. used to go out as a kid, watch dad race, watch my brothers race with him. When I got old enough, I started driving with a, with a buddy of ours that we grew up with. We kind of jumped in a limited suspension thing and kind of two 15-year-old kids pissing blood after every race thinking it was fun <laughs> as hell, winning races. And, and, but we started to win and got good at it. And as, as I was getting better at that, I was still going to high school, and some other people wanted me to drive for them and started paying for it. And so we, we kept on digging with it, and I dr started driving for Walker Evans, which some people remember Walker as a legend of off-road racing, and went to college to play football ended up playing basketball. Oh, so wow. I was racing before, and then in the summers I would race. So I'd play football in football season, basketball season, and then there was a Midwest series that would race from Labor Memorial Day to Labor Day. So I'd go do that. So around August I'd start two days with football, leave town on the weekend, go finish my race season up, fit, fit, do football season, then do two basketball and football oh. practice, and have it, you know, start all over again. When did you just study? Yeah. When did I study? I, got it. I have the piece of paper. It says I'm a graduate of Georgetown University. Nobody asked me what my GPA is. Nobody cares. <laughs> it doesn't but matter. I, it's a but I did graduate, baby, and I got the Georgetown and University it's a degree. Georgetown degree. That's right. That's right. Now, see, your parents sounded wonderful. My mom would have smacked me in the head and told me to focus on one thing. Focus. Yeah, You're I too mean, distracted. Fo focusing is one thing. I mean, look, but, but that was the thing is that if I was going to do it, you had to you had to commit to it. My father would never let me do things unless I really wanted to do them. You had to focus, and that's one thing you learn is focus on whatever you're doing. 
but don't just the parents try to always and I'm not a parent so don't take my parenting skills as anything but, <laughs> but it's it you know everybody you always see these people where literally you see guys at four years old their parents have them in a bandolero or some sort of a go-kart or right. you know they're they're playing pop order football as a sixth grader their dad puts them in school a year late the Todd Marowanovich thing where you know he's never had a cheeseburger but he can but he can find pot in three counties away right. and but you end up with that's all they focus on my parents weren't like that we my brothers played football they wrestled when I grew up I played volleyball I was on the swim team were you allowed to quit anything if you didn't I, I took up one piano lesson mm -hmm. yeah and it wasn't for me uh, you know if you didn't like to do it they didn't force you to do it but if you started it you had to finish that season okay. you know it wasn't like you could middle of the season say oh nope done yeah, don't if you, play football anymore. yeah if you committed to it you got to finish finish your commitments and, and focus on what you're trying to do and if you didn't want to do it again then they, they said hey it's okay give what you a position hug. in which well which upper uh i i'm guessing you were a guard i was i was yeah i was a center in basketball <laughs> yeah, in, in no, in i basketball. was i was a i was a, a one and two guard in, in college i mean basically I, I sat at the end of the bench guard the water attacking anybody who got near it um, that was my main position. Uh, yeah, but I want to go back. I just touched. I know that we're you know you got the big race tonight. We'd like to fight. But in fact, that you played for John Thompson. Played for Big John. My the original John. My lord. I mean, that's you walked on to a John Thompson Georgetown basketball. Team. Yep. Grant uh, had and Alan Iverson. And you're Harrington. a white kid whose nickname was Fatty. Yeah, Willie Fat, McCrash, Fatty. That doesn't. That that's amazing. A different word for poophead. That is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I, I mean, how, what's it? It's got to be. How can you be a George? I mean, in George, you put basketball. You played. I know you played football and basketball. Yep. But I bet when you were picking up chicks, you you leaned heavier on the basketball <laughs> side, right? Yeah, you tend to. Basketball is definitely a much bigger sport while you're in college at Georgetown than the almighty Georgetown football team, who I support and love to death. We're in the Patriot Leagues now and having a very, very rough season. But yes, uh, the basketball angle yeah. definitely worked much better. And it wasn't tough to find me on the team. Let me pitch you on an idea, okay? Uh oh. There's an idea for the for the racing guys, the truck racing guys. Okay. Now, uh, your sport, I know it doesn't need any help, but here's what I think might make it a better television sport. Okay. All right, every time I see a pickup truck going fast, it usually has a, uh, a dog in the back. All right, you know, the guy racing around with the dogs. Now, we can't actually put real dogs in the back of the truck, but how about this? You guys all race with stuffed fake dogs in the back. And if you lose the dog, if you drive so recklessly that you lose the dog, that's it, you're eliminated. The guy that wins the race is the guy that's with the dog at the end. Huh? Genius? What? <laughs> no? <laughs> well, you know, some of us are superstitious. I've had monkeys in my trucks before. Yeah. I've had hamster-looking creatures in my truck before. This cross-eyed hamster is kind of funny. Um, guys have done... Beanie babies? Uh, I think no. some people have done... No. Yeah, no, some people have done oh. beanie babies. I used to do, there's an old Bart Simpson doll years ago I think we used to put in there, but I don't even know what happened to that old Bart. Um, he caught on fire. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I wrecked with him and he, and he melted. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure, but you know, I'll pitch it to Wayne Otten and the powers that Come be. On. I'll see what they say. Wouldn't that be Can't fun? Hurt. Oh, that dog, he takes the turn a little quick. Oh, the dog's going, oh, he held it. You know, I'm saying. And then again, look, it's not real dogs. I love animals. What about neon like, outlined at the bottom? Let's go the other the way. neon on the truck? Oh, mm -hmm. oh, okay. oh, that would look cool, too. Oh, man, and then maybe yeah, when they stop. Know? Like, you can do that bouncy thing up and down that you see at the lights. <laughs> Hydraulics in a yeah. system. Yeah. <laughs> now we're, we're ruining. Now we're ruining a perfectly fine sport. Brendan, the, the dog is okay, but not the neon. Okay. Yeah, that's going over the line. Brendan, best of luck tonight. We'll be watching for you. The number 77 South Point Racing. Uh, what color is the truck? Give me a Chevrolet, truck. big blue with rainbow stripes on the side. Oh, fantastic. Best of luck to you. Thank you Brandon very much. Gunn joining us here. Live from the Texas Motor Speedway. Take a break back after this. I'm Hugs. Kelly. Live 105.3. Brent, let me show you something.